Hello Internet, my name is Jim Stewart and this video is to demonstrate how I clean my weight-driven clock chains. Um, there are many different approaches to this uh, that I have seen out there, but mine is very fast and very effective, so I thought I'd share that with you. If you've got an antique clock with chains that look like this, um, brass or steel, the product that I use to clean works well on both is CLR. The uh, uh, rust remover in this works real well on the steel chains that often are accompanied with rust when they get old. Um, in doing this video I got to thinking well I pretty much always use CLR and I've never really tried using a homemade remedy or mix so I thought I'd do that today so that we can compare the results. So I'll take this chain I'm gonna split it in half and I'm gonna do half of it in the CLR and I'm gonna do the other half in ammonia, water, and Dawn dish soap and we'll compare the two. Let's get to it. So all you're going to need for this process is a pair of disposable gloves and of course your cleaning solution and this is the 50-50 dilution of ammonia and water and a squirt of Dawn dish soap. We're going to give that a go and see what the results are on that. Oh and of course water for rinsing. I'm going to be doing this in this basin because that way I don't have to move my camera equipment around so you would normally be doing this probably in a sink. We'll get started with the first chain here. With your gloves on you're just going to cup your hand and we'll start with the CLR and fill that cup with cupped hand with the cleaning solution and then just in a hand washing motion gently roll that chain through your hand and as you can see it's already the, the dirt and grime is already coming off starting to come clean and the amount of pressure that I'm using is moderate for this type of chain. Um, you can see it's already coming clean. Uh, I feel my hands warming up a little bit from the friction. Um, but you're pretty safe with the medium thickness chain. You're not going to damage that um, scrubbing too hard. And I'm going to give it a rinse. Look how fast that comes clean. Just that scrubbing motion, the chain itself works against each link and gets in between and gets them clean in real short order. So then I can just take it, put it in a piece of paper towel, and after I've rinsed it in the clean water several times, and uh, dry it off. And there you go. Nice clean clock chain. Okay, let's give it a go this time using the ammonia and Dawn dish soap. So we'll get the second half of the chain here, and I'll just do the same process. Let's see how this works. Okay, I'm rubbing till I feel the friction. The chain starts getting warm. Have a look at it. Well, I see a lot of dirt coming off. But something tells me that that chain is not going to be quite as shiny as the first one. And again, I wanted to do this as a comparison because I haven't done that before. And look at that. Okay, perhaps if I keep going, let's just do another run with the ammonia. And that ammonia is strong. It's already going up my nose. I don't have that issue with a CLR. 
CLR is also 80% plant based, recommended by the EPA, so I think it's a lot less harsh uh, chemical. Give it a couple of good scrubbings here. Feel my hand getting warm again. Let's have a look at it. Okay, it's coming clean, but that's second run. Let me rinse my other hand off here. We can have a look at the two. Okay, CLR, ammonia and water, and Dawn dish soap. Looks like I'm going to have to go a third time to get the results that I got the, on the single run of the CLR. Okay, now I'm going to try this uh, steel chain and we'll use the CLR on it. Cut my hand, fill that cup up, and start just scrubbing away here. Now with this thinner chain, usually typically used for novelty clocks, I don't want to over scrub or, or use too much pressure because the links are the, the links, well, the, the material to make the link is thinner and therefore it's a little bit more fragile. If you scrub too hard, you can have the links catch one another and actually damage the chain. I'll start separating. So I'm just going to use a little bit more of a gentle amount of pressure. And already you can see the orangish color coming off of this. Rinse my glove off. Nice and clean. I would say that one run on that is more than sufficient. Okay? okay grab a paper towel. Throw it in there. Of course, like I mentioned, I'd be normally doing this in a sink with running water. It would be far easier. I could get all the muck off my hands before I handle it again. Very good. So yeah, you can see here, we got a little short section of brass chain connected to the steel. Here's a look at before and after. Again, here's before on the medium thickness and after. You can see the huge difference here. And on the real light or thin chain, almost turned it, well, didn't turn it, but it, it, it actually is almost a, a, a nice pewter color um, as opposed to this just rusty metal. Put them together here and you can compare them. Really came out nice. Okay, one thing I'm going to recommend, especially on the steel chain, is that after you've cleaned it, you want to make sure it's thoroughly dry. You can accomplish that with a hair dryer, or you can do what I do, is uh, warm up the toaster oven without the chain in it. Once it's warmed up to about 100 degrees or so, uh, shut it off, make sure the oven's turned off, and lay your chain in there for just a couple of minutes. You don't want to overheat the chain and cause it to start to blue. You can start to blue the metal and you may not want that effect. So just a couple of minutes or use a hair dryer and the chain is thoroughly dry so that it is not going to start rusting because it will rust bit rather quickly. Another way to uh, inhibit rust from forming on the steel chains, because once you've cleaned these things, if there was any protective coating on it, it's probably gone, um, and it was partially gone anyway because the chain was rusting. So I'm going to introduce a product that I use around the shop. Great stuff. It's called Bow Shield T9. A little bit pricey, not too bad. I'll put a link in the uh, bottom for you. 
uh, I use these on my tools that I don't want to rust after I've cleaned them thoroughly. Um, all my uh, clock shop tools are indoors, but I have some tools like hammers and things, sledgehammers that I use outside, and they're 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 always when I'm going to grab them, they're a little bit rusty. Well, since I've been putting this T9 on them, I don't have that problem anymore. So I said, well, gee, why not use that on a chain? The uh, product uh, indicates that it it leaves a thin waxy film and it must be really thin because you can't detect it or feel it so what I do is I just take a, uh, a little small shot of that and squirt it into my hand very small you don't need much and just do that same process now I can feel this sluggish feeling on the gloves like like wax, a little bit like wax, um, and, it, and it's penetrating that steel really well, designed to penetrate, and uh, so I give that a couple of runs like that, then I take a towel, clean it off. Now if you want your chains to oxidize, especially the brass ones, if you don't want the brass ones to stay real shiny looking, well then you don't want to put this on there. But if you do, if you have a clock that uh, you want the um, chain to remain nice and shiny, I don't know if you can see that comparison. So this is the clock that I, uh, uh, sorry, the chain that I just cleaned today. And as you can see, it just slides apart nicely. And this was two days ago due to filming and it kind of sticks to itself a little bit but look at the color difference I don't hopefully you can see that on the camera and uh, I have to readjust you here a little bit I hate doing that um, this was about four days ago so you can already see the change occurring with the brass chain it's already starting to uh, gently oxidize or change colors. Alright, well that's about the shortest video I've done so far. I want to thank you for watching and please subscribe if you haven't already. Thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and uh, click on the bell if you want to be alerted of future videos. And we will see you back here for another episode of Antique and Vintage Black Forest Cuckoo Clock Repair. See you then.